the creatives i'm joanna penn from the creativepen.com and today i'm talking about how you can use grammarly to improve your writing so what is grammarly well it's an online proofreading tool which means you can either copy and paste your chapters into it uh, or you can have it as like a plugin so when you do emails and when you do blog posts it will check your writing as you go and I've been using Grammarly for a couple of years now and it is just a super useful tool so of course I advocate working with professional editors but if you want to learn how to improve your writing and improve the manuscript before you send it to an editor this is definitely the way to go and I run all my writing through Grammarly both for my blogs I have the email plugin and I do it for each of my chapters when I do a book because you can learn a lot when you go through the process yourself so for example I know I use a lot of very and actually words and I often find that I repeat the same words over and over again in the text now if I can find those and uh, use the thesaurus side to substitute those words out or if I can find the clunky sentences before I send it to an editor and an external proofreader a human uh, then I can make the book better I also learn for example I am terrible with commas. I can't seem to understand how commas should work. So one of the things I always do with Grammarly is go through and change my commas. So now I'm going to get into a demo and I'll do both fiction and non-fiction so I hope you'll find that useful. So let's get into the tutorial on Grammarly. So first of all you can add it to your browser and there is a free version and a premium version. So if I just show you what it's like with an email so here's an example of an email and I've just uh, typed a sentence here. <laughs> so basically when you have the Grammarly uh, plugin into your browser, uh, it will help you with your writing. So for example here, uh, I can change that to thanks um, and then obviously that is the wrong word but is it your or you you can also obviously ignore so if you're using uh, if you're writing something that involves special words you can ignore it or you can add to the dictionary so it doesn't pick it up next time uh, so in this case I'll say your and then of course email so that's the really basic functionality you can also uh, you can always uh, click this little button and it will actually edit within a pane like this uh, and you can turn on your various um, spelling punctuation uh, you can basically set it up how you want to check it the same applies within a blog post so again you get this little button and you can click it or you can edit within the text and here you can go through and on the right hand side it's going to tell you what to change so this is saying delete the word own because it's your so you don't need the extra one and if you click the little drop down it's going to say uh, it's going to explain it more so you can just uh, scroll down and have a look again I often use the word own <laughs> too much uh, so that is within a blog post but what I really love is to use it for my books and for that I use Grammarly Premium and basically you can copy and paste chapters into or sections of writing or whatever into Grammarly. So here are some I've done already. So this is a non-fiction chapter from The Healthy Writer about yoga. Now I've just pasted the chapter in and you can see on the right hand side uh, the changes that it wants to make. Now you get a score in the bottom right hand area here. Now it's very unlikely you're going to get 100 <laughs> and I'll explain that as we go through. But basically you can then go through and fix these things um, and learn as you go. So I know that one of my issues is commas <laughs> because I'm just useless at commas and here this is an example of a comma so what it's saying and you can use the little drop down it says you're missing a comma before the coordinating conjunction and in a compound sentence so there are um, two ways of obviously dealing with this it one is to add the comma so I can just do that or I can click it and it will actually make that change or in this case I could and I'm looking down here and I've got a lot of ands so in that case I might decide to reword it so I could say I've been going to a yoga school three times a week and then I can actually get rid of that and say um, although I started out 
in the gentle remedial class. So now that's broken up the sentence. Now what I actually do is I will have my Scrivener document open at the same time and I will go between Grammarly and Scrivener and make the changes within Scrivener. And then I'll actually copy and paste the uh, the changed chapter back in and, and hope that it has improved my score. <laughs> so that's basically how I do it. So let's have a look at some of the other things that are going wrong. So here it's saying repetitive word class or classes. And yeah, you can see here, although I started out in the gentle remedial class, I can now go to the more active classes. So what it's saying is mm, maybe you don't need to use the same word twice. In this case, I'll leave it. Again, some problems with commas and ands, so I can fix those. Then this is interesting. So this is uh, because I'm in the UK, The it is trying to fix it with UK spelling. I actually use US spelling. So this is a obviously a setting that you can sort out, but I know that is an American spelling. Uh, so you can decide whether or not you use British English or American English. <laughs> I personally use American English, even though I'm British, <laughs> because, uh, and just in case you're wondering, it's because American readers will complain for typos with British spelling, whereas British readers are used to American spelling and won't complain about typos. <laughs> so this is a little tip. This is the same thing down here, practicing. Um, this is uh, one spelling and, uh, you know, you can spell it the other way. So some of the other ones, overused word. This is a great uh, thing that it picks up because often the word completely is over overused and it's just not something that you might want to do. So maybe you want to change that to entirely and that will get rid of that issue. So here is an interesting one. Uh, this is you can't decide to be am author. So obviously I've picked up uh, it's picked up here that the it's it's wrong am or it should be an author, but also an incorrect verb, um, and that's because the spelling was wrong. So this is a sort of a double fix here. If I fix this one, it will fix. Um, oh yes, yeah, so there <laughs> now it's be an am an. So there we go uh, to change that. Amazing. I definitely often overuse the word amazing. Now it's suggesting fabulous. I don't think that is appropriate. So you can just click ignore and that will go away. So you can see that essentially you work through your chapter uh, looking at each segment and whether or not it needs changing. Here I've used a comma but it's not necessary. So again you can click to get rid of that. And then the idea is that by the end of the chapter, you have learned some things, but also that your score has improved. Now, you definitely don't need to make every single change, but it will help you learn how you use different words and also pick up things before you send it to an editor. So here's an example of fiction, and this is from uh, one of the Penny Appleton sweet romances that I co-write with my mum, and this is Love Home at Last, which is set partially in Edinburgh. So uh, again, exactly the same type of format. As usual, I have problems with my commas, <laughs> so I can add that in. Um, again, the overused words, uh, in this case it fits, so you can just uh, ignore that. And either you can go through and actually click ignore or you can just uh, leave it there. It doesn't really matter. But this is interesting. So this is incomplete comparison. You made him sound mundane, Anna, but he's handsome and so nice. Uh, and this is when uh, Lizzie has met the lovely Donal. Uh, so here you can think about rewriting. And I think this is where Grammarly will really help you because even though obviously a proofreader is going to pick up your um, typos and some grammar issues, things like this are based around your craft, learning your craft. And I think it's only by examining your own writing that you are going to get better. And for me, part of writing each book is trying to improve. Now the next line uh, actually is because Anna is Scottish, uh, we don't have much dialect, but here uh, we do have, you know, a wee surprise and it's saying it's an unusual word pair, but in this case, it is a Scottish type language. So we're going to leave that as well, or um, we can ignore that. One of the other things I like is the picking up passive voice, which is something that is quite common with writers. Uh, so here it says, this sentence appears to be written in passive voice, consider writing in the active voice. So this is the walls of the imposing building are hung with amazing art. Uh, you know, you could rewrite that as 
you know, amazing artwork hangs on the walls of the imposing building. Passive voice is definitely something that many writers struggle with. So this kind of checking can be really useful. So if you do make the changes directly into Grammarly, you can export this version if you would rather do it there. Or as I said, I make the changes directly into Scrivener. You just export it as a TXT and then you can import it into whatever software you use. On the left hand side, you can also set the various checks and also use a plagiarism checker if you want to. That can be particularly useful for nonfiction. For example, if you think you might have inadvertently copied and pasted a description from online, uh, that can be a really good way of checking things. So that's a bit about how I use Grammarly. And of course, I still absolutely believe you should use professional editors. But as a first pass, then Grammarly is brilliant for proofreading and improving your writing and learning about the mistakes you make every time. So if you're interested, you can check it out at thecreativepen.com forward slash Grammarly. And uh, I am an affiliate of Grammarly. So if you do buy the premium uh, level, I will get a small percentage of that sale but at no extra cost to you and I hope that you'll use my link uh, so I can keep doing these free videos. Okay today I talked about how you can use Grammarly to improve your writing both in your books on blog posts and emails and I hope you found the tutorial useful and remember to check it out using my link if you fancy at thecreativepen.com forward slash Grammarly. Okay I'll be back soon with another video so subscribe to the channel and please leave your comments and questions and suggestions for other videos below because I love to hear from you. So happy writing, happy editing and I'll see you next time.